to address that, but I will dive right in here. So back to school with Code HS, tracking student progress. First off, a lot of the features that I'm gonna be covering today uh, are free. Some of the features that I'm covering are also pro features. So creating a teacher account on Code HS. if you guys are on this, you probably all have an account already. Um, but if not, it is free to create the account. All you need to do is go to codehs.com slash sign up and you'll be able to see a lot of what I'm talking about. There is definitely no obligation to follow along as I go through these topics um, because frankly, it's gonna be pretty easy to navigate and intuit where a lot of these features are that I do cover today. This is just kind of a, oh, I can do this type of session. Um, so I will dive right in with the navigation. So the tools that I'm gonna be going over today, there are a few different ones that essentially all point to the same, how are my students doing? Now, how to get to these tools, you can go to one of a few different spots. The first and probably easiest spot is just going to the toolbox. This will be here at the top of your Code HS bar, so to speak. You just click toolbox and then you go to progress and there will be a list of all of the different types of progress tracking you can see. Additionally, if you go lower than this main top menu as you're navigating through the Code HS website, there will be a bar specific to the section where you'll see roster, assignments, progress, review, and then I think there's settings. Um, if you also click the drop down for progress there, that'll be another way to get to most of the pages that we're talking about. And then the final way, if you're really lost, <laughs> you can just click on this magnifying icon, which is the quick find. And from that quick find, you'll be able to search any of the tools that you want to search, which in this case, you can just type in progress and you'll see all of the various progress tools to type in. So don't get too bogged down as I'm going through some of these resources with how do I get from A to B. Just know you can either click on the thing that says progress, you can click the toolbox, or you can click into the quick find and just search for what you're looking for. The different progress tracking tools on CodeHS will share some similarities, such as the color coding that you can see here in this key, but there will also be some differences depending on how deep you want to drill down with these different resources. So first off, I'm going to cover the progress tracking dashboard. Then I'm going to cover a variant of that same dashboard, which is the time tracking version of it. From there, we're going to look very briefly at the gradebook, as well as progress bars, which exists on the roster page. And then finally, the student view to see individual student progress, essentially just as they see it. After I cover these at a high level, I'll actually share my screen as I go through uh, a live demo of some of these features so you can see what they look like in practice. And then uh, just feel free to ask any questions as I'm going through and I'll share some resources out at the end. Perfect, so the progress tracking dashboard, this can be found in that progress dropdown menu I was showing you earlier. Essentially what this tool is best for is getting a high level view of, okay, this is all of the activities within a given unit, and this is my student's completion of each of those activities. The key that you'll see here will range from dark green, which means finalized and submitted, all the way to gray, which means a student hasn't touched it. Yellow means a student's opened it, but maybe hasn't completed it. And then green, pink, and kind of burgundy or maroon um, are the colors that are everywhere in between. So maybe it's been revised uh, and just is back to the student or the teacher for review, things of that nature. And again, if you just hover over these on the website, which I'll do when I get there, um, you'll be able to see what each of them are. The next tool is the time tracking dashboard. This is a little, sorry, Claire, is there something? Yeah, sorry for the noise. Uh, Julie was just asking, um, you know, why are some of them light green versus dark green, um, which I think you'll get into once you get onto the platform, you'll show specifically what they are. Yes, I, I will do that. Um, the light green is it's been finalized, but not submitted. So like maybe the student like went through the auto grader and it completed the project, but you haven't finalized it in the grade book. That's the, the main difference between that light and the dark green. Um, and so the time tracking dashboard, this is just a variant, like I said, of that progress tracking dashboard where rather than just having a circle to denote completion status, you actually have the amount of time individual students are spending on each activity. Um, this can be really, really useful for identifying if certain students are excelling, maybe if they're taking less than that course average, or it can be a sign that maybe a student's struggling. If you see a lot of these yellow ones, that means they've started things and haven't completed it or if you just see that they're taking much more time than the rest of their peers. If you're ever curious, and I'll show this live, you'll be able to click into 
any one of the activities by just clicking on the amount of time that a student has spent on it. And it'll actually show you each iteration of that student code. So you can see, oh, they just spent like five minutes before entering the next function. That's why it took them a while. Maybe they got distracted. Or you can see, oh, the student's trying a bunch of things that just aren't working. And then it might be worth reaching out to that student for individualized support. Oh, I seem to be drawing on my on my screen. Um, there we go. I don't know why it skipped so many. Cool. So the gradebook is another great place to check student progress. This is a little bit more holistic and that not only will it show you the progress with the same color key that was used on the other ones, but it'll actually show you how many points the students are earning on these different problems. This can either be students earning the grades themselves by going through the auto grader or you assigning the grades manually. Whichever it is, the grades will be finalized and added to the gradebook. And I, I should note that the gradebook and the progress tracking dashboards themselves, those are both pro features. Um, but I'll show you in just a second here how to check the same progress in the same grades without that tool. So the roster page is where you're going to find all of the remaining progress. From this page, you'll be able to see the percentage of assigned assignments that students have completed by this high level view. And frankly, this isn't gonna be as granular as detailed as either of the tools that I've shown prior. Um, the progress tracking dashboard obviously is much more useful for seeing which assignments have been completed, which units have been completed, and the gradebook even better in terms of grading. But this can be useful if you just know, it's like, okay, it is September 29th today. We've been in school for a few weeks. My students should be at least 20% of the way through. You can see this page very easily. Okay, which students are and which students aren't at that point. And then you can reach out depending on the support that's needed there. Next is the student view. Um, this is a free tool. Um, so anyone can access this. Just from the rostering page of CodeHS, if you click student view, which is just the icon that's next to their name, it'll take you to the, pretty much exactly what the student sees. And so from this page, the color coding key is gonna be identical to what has been on the other ones with dark green being that fully completed. And you'll be able to see the percent completed for each student within the unit without needing to drill down too deeply there. And I believe that's all of the tools. And so now let's explore it live just a bit. And I'm gonna take a quick break here to check in with Claire and Ursula. Are there any things uh, that have come up that you would like me to address? Yeah, we had a few questions. One was around time tracking. Um, just is the time tracked active, active working time or just screen time? Um, I don't know if you can answer that one. And yeah. then there's one other I can I can ask as well. Yes, so the time tracking one, I'll just take it to the page uh, that it's on. The time tracking one will only track active student time with, I mean, a caveat being we understand that it might take some students some time to like think about what's going to go on the paper or the IDE next. And so I think it uh, times out after about 45 seconds. So it'll track active time within a period, but after 45 seconds, or maybe it's a minute and 15 seconds, it'll stop tracking time and it'll just wait and like essentially idle until a student enters uh, any new information into that IDE. Thanks, Ben. And then another question was, um, so some assignments are scored automatically and some are not. Is there a reason that some exercises are given scores? Um, and are those ones that are recommended for teachers review? So I guess the difference between automatically graded versus teacher review, and how do you adjust that? Good question. Um, so that is <laughs> that's kind of a complicated question because it depends on the course and the assignment and a, a bunch of other nuances. What I'll say is in general, most of the ones that have like code solution as opposed to free response where there's a lot more free response on like the AP courses and some of the cybersecurity stuff, um, those free responses are obviously gonna have a teacher score, right? We don't have a debugger that's built for answering those questions. Now, if it is like the student is coding and there's a solution code that they're trying to get as close to as possible, or they're just trying to like build something that we can check with the debugger, those are gonna be able to be just activated uh, by the auto grader themselves where that's gonna be the assigned score. Now, there are certain instances where it'll make more sense for you as the teacher to configure 
the grading such that rather than it being the auto grader, it is you as the teacher doing the grading. And an example of this is we have our intro to JavaScript course. Within that course, one of the most commonly like assigned problems is a question that asks for user input to determine if you're eligible to be the next president of the United States of America. Part of this question is, how old is the user that's responding to the code? Now, there are a bunch of different ways to ask how old someone is. You can ask, how old are you? How many years have you been alive? What's your age? Uh, how long have you been on this planet? I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to ask that same question. Our auto grader, like our step-by-step -step debugger, is going to look for very, very particular language. And so it might not be fair to the students to have them need that language in order to score full credit. So if you can if you come across problems like this, where students are banging their head against the wall, they understand the concept, they're getting all the right code there, but maybe just not in the language we have, those are instances in which it may be worth converting from just the auto grader to the teacher graders to kind of address those nuances. And sorry if I got a little bit distracted here, but I hope that that answer helps to clarify why it might be auto graded or teacher graded or when those instances may happen. Thanks, Ben. And Julia, I also added a help article in there that just shows how you can adjust versus teacher versus auto graded as well. Perfect. Um, am I good to dive back in here? Yep. And then we can answer some more in a little bit. Awesome. Great. Uh, so showing this live, this is a demo section. Obviously, the data that I have here is a little bit wonky. It's going to be probably pretty rare that you have students who are at 86 and 87 percent and then also students who are at 8 percent in the course. Um, but this is the progress bar I was tracking. I was talking about on the last page. How you navigate here is just you go to roster. It'll show you all of your students, and then you'll see this bar. If you have an account with CodeHS and you're not seeing this bar, it just means that you're on the free version rather than the pro version. Um, and what you do in that instance is you will just click in to the student view as described in my slides. And once you get into that, it'll show you all of the units and then the student's percentage completed for that unit. If you're curious about how far the student is within each unit and which units they or activities they've completed, you can just pop it open. You'll see all of the main lessons, and then you'll be able to see the completion status for each one of those units within the lesson, or with each one of those lessons, excuse me, within the unit. Um, and again, this is the key up here. So it, it ranges from assignment finalized, assignment resubmitted after review, assignment reviewed, assignment submitted, right? So this is the student has submitted it, but the teacher hasn't finalized that grade. And then it, the yellow is just the student has started it, but hasn't completed it. And the gray is no one has touched it. So this is one way of doing it. Frankly, it, it's totally workable with smaller groups of kids, but as class sizes get larger and larger, I do understand that it can be a little bit tedious to click into each student's student view to understand where everyone is at which is why <laughs> we do have this progress tracking dashboard, which as you can see, some of the students that are close to 80% of the way through the course, which happens to be both of my Olivers randomly, will have their completion way further than their peers. And some of the other students who are at 8% of the course don't have nearly as much completed here. If you're ever curious to be reminded of what is the assignment that is being uh, reviewed here, simply click into the activity and it'll take you to that student's version of that activity and you'll be able to see their code firsthand. Um, I'll stop real quick there. Are there any questions on just the basic progress tracking dashboard? I think we're good right now. I'm responding awesome. to a few written, so we're good. Sweet, awesome, thank you. Um, so moving along, you can customize this progress tracker to show you different views. This one in particular is just showing um, the first unit that's assigned and the percentage for that first unit. So you can see within the unit, just as it shows here, okay, Oliver is at 90%. So you can go to the module tracker and sure enough, Oliver here is also at 90%. And this is just useful if you're making your way through the semester and you know that the first four units are supposed to be completed, you can just pop open this page and see, okay, great. These students have completed the first four. It's worth me checking into the other students to see uh, if they need additional support. And just so you know, when I say reach out to the students, you can come to this roster page and go to conversation and you'll be able to start a conversation with the students and check in uh, at any point. And this can be useful regardless of, 
regardless of if you're in a classroom environment or a remote environment. Um, and Claire, I saw a couple of folks raising their hands. I'm happy to address those questions. Um, I know we can't hear them, but if they write it in the chat, I am more than happy to respond to those. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to add them in the Q&A, uh, which you guys should see, or um, feel free to add them into the chat as well, and we'll either answer them live or uh, respond written uh, to you guys. Cool. Um, and I'll just cover this time tracking one uh, as we're waiting for those to come in. The time tracking dashboard, I kind of touched on this earlier. This is, I think, my favorite CodeHS tool that we have. Um, in that it does allow you to see exactly how long students are spending on activities, which frankly can be useful if a student comes to you and is like, I've spent forever on this, I have no idea what I'm doing, can you help me get the answer? You can kind of call them out on that being like, actually, it shows here that you only spent 30 seconds. Um, and because of the fact that the timer will time out if students aren't actively engaged, you know that this number is relatively accurate. The other reason why this is useful is it's really good for indicating if a student, like I said earlier, is excelling. Maybe they're spending less time on the assignments than their peers, or if they're struggling, maybe they're spending a little more time. And in either of those instances, you can tailor the course to those students where maybe the students who are excelling get some more rigorous challenge problems or challenge exercises. Um, and the students that are struggling, maybe you assign them some practice problems such that everyone's getting the support they need. So by the time it gets to the end of the course, the certification, the final, the AP exam, whatever it may be, everyone's on that same page, ready to go. Um, Claire, do we have any questions that have come in? Not at, the, not at the moment. Okay, awesome, no worries. So what I wanna show is kind of what the history looks like. The reason why checking history on an activity is so useful is if you see the average time for an activity, which none of my data is showing this here, is 15 to 20 minutes, let's say for something that's a little more complex, but you see one or two students have come in at 15 or 30 seconds, that could be a pretty telltale sign that there might be some cheating involved. And uh, we hate to see it, it's definitely something we try to discourage, but it's totally something that happens, right? One student's like, I'm gonna do problems one through three, you do problems four through six, then they just work on the code, they copy, paste it into an email, send it to their peers, and then they copy and paste it into the program. Now, again, it's rare that it happens. A lot of students are actually engaged in like working through the material, but if someone's late, they forgot about an assignment, it can happen. And how you can check this, right, is if you see an activity that looks like it's got relatively low usage, you can click on it, and then it'll pull up the IDE with all of their code. And all you need to do is navigate to more, to history, and then it'll show you each iteration of that student's code, right? And so it creates a new iteration, either every time the student copies and pastes, every time they hit enter, or I think it's just about every 45 seconds that the student is actively typing, it'll just create a new copy. This can also be useful for you as the teacher to see where your student went wrong. You can check some of their older iterations and be like, oh, it was working up until here, and then you messed it up at 1.58 in the afternoon. Um, so just a couple of useful things there. This is just, again, the surefire way to see if a student's actually doing their work rather than copying and pasting just as a result of if it goes from no lines of code to like 150 lines of code in 30 seconds, probably no one's able to type quite that fast and that'll be an indication of the cheating. Once everything is finalized, either by you assigning a grade or by it being auto grader once the student has clicked submit on a completed assignment, it'll populate in the grade book. The gradebook is going to be the last progress tracking tool and that it not only shows you how far through the course the students have gotten in terms of completed assignments, but again, it'll show you how the students are doing on each assignment. As some of you teachers are likely aware, with the auto grader tool, um, students will automatically get full credit for those assignments because it just it won't let students submit it until it passes all of the checks that are assigned. Um, if it is being free response, where, or if it's a quiz, those are some instances, uh, like if it's teacher graded, right, where the grades might vary some and not everyone will be getting 100%. And that'll be factored onto here. You can see at the top exactly what the score is out of. And then you can see at the bottom what the students are scoring on it. Um, there will be another session, I believe it's in a couple of weeks on grading and grading tools. On that, they'll go over the configuration of the gradebook and how to customize this. But I just want to let you know, it is another resource that's available in terms of progress tracking and making sure uh, that you just have a glimpse of not only where the students are, but how the students are doing as well.
Um, and so that's another good stopping point for questions. I'll check in with Claire Ursula. Has anything new popped up? Awesome. So I will jump back into the slides and we are close to wrapping up now. Let me go back to present. Perfect. So there are some resources. Uh, hopefully you kind of internalize some takeaways about how you can use this to better support your students as they make their way through uh, the course and as you make your way through teaching them the material. But if anything was a little bit confusing or you just want stuff to refer to, we do have these links for kind of the progress tracking overview, uh, progress tracking use as a help article, and then also just a gradebook overview. And Claire, if you don't mind posting these links in the, uh, the chat so teachers can copy and paste, that would be super appreciated. And sorry, here, I'll, I'll hang on the slide for a sec. We just got a question, Ben, in the Q&A. Yeah. If a student sends a message on the code site, where exactly would they see that message? That's a really good question. Um, and so this might also be something that's covered in the grading section, but I am happy to address this now. So let's say, I'll just go back to the assignment here. Let's say a student has a question right from this activity where they'll go is they'll go to more, they'll go to conversation, and then they will write in um, a question here that they can send to you. Once you get this written in, you'll actually get a notification on your inbox up here. It'll have a little blue circle that just indicates that a student has reached out for help. If you open this, it'll take you to a code review tab. Oh, nope, not for, this is because I'm not in a teacher section. I'm in a student section there. Uh, where that this will take you if you are in your teacher portal is it'll take you to code review. If you pop open code review, what it'll do is it'll not only show you the most recent uh, student submissions, um, but it'll also show you any of the most recent questions that you've gotten. So anytime a student reaches out, it'll pop up with the question and then it'll also show you the activity that it's tied to. To answer the question, you can just click here and it'll take you directly to um, the student's version of the assignment where you as the teacher can go in, go to conversation and then respond to their question. Cool, I hope that answered it. Anything else? Perfect. Um, and Claire, did you post these uh, links in the channel or the chat? Sorry. Yes, we will be posting those. Yep. Perfect. So some other resources um, with CodeHS, you can become a CodeHS certified educator. Um, you can also join the CodeHS Educators Facebook group. This is a pretty fun pa page in that teachers share ideas, they share resources, um, they share uh, also some custom problems that they've created themselves on this page. There are gonna be more PD workshops. I'll have another link to this in an additional slide that are free, just like this one, uh, with some information on how to use CodeHS in a way that may better support your students. And we're also on Twitter and Instagram. I believe our handle is just at CodeHS. So the next two upcoming webinars, the next one's gonna be how to use CodeHS for in-person and virtual learning. That is gonna take place next Thursday, October 7th at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. This is really useful, especially this year where there are some districts that are doing hybrid. There are some that are fully in person, some that are remote. It can just be useful for addressing students uh, in any of those environments. And then I did reference this one a couple of times today as I was going through the material, but we're also gonna have easy ways to grade and provide feedback. And that'll cover more in depth ways for how to grade some of the grading tools that are available, um, as well as just more in depth, how to set up the grade book, how to export it, things of that nature. Awesome, and so that takes me to the final slide. Thank you all for joining me today. Thanks all for coming. Um, and I'll take a few more minutes here if anyone has any more questions that I haven't gotten to yet, or uh, if anyone wants to ask anything that I didn't get to over the course of the presentation. Yeah, Ben, we do have one question.